Hello again, this is Joe from Sparkle and welcome to this video scribe tutorial. This is the third tutorial in our course series and I'll be showing you how to use different effects such as drawing effects, filters and also the move in animate method. So first of all, we're going to recap on the scribe we've been building over the last two tutorials. So I'm just going to preview that for you now. Okay, so as you remember, we started on the second scene. This is the first scene and you can see that each item is being drawn out with a set camera position. You also may notice this zoom at end option. Um, if you have that unchecked, what will happen is when you finish previewing a scene, it will end on the last item. This is also important when you want to publish your work. Make sure you have that unchecked if you want the finished video to end on the last item. Otherwise what will happen, it will zoom out and you'll have the whole um, project on the video. Okay then. So what we're going to do now is add a new image onto the canvas. Um, what I'm going to do with this image is show you the different effects that you can do with it. Okay, so we use the add image option again. This time what I'm going to do is I'm going to search um, for a particular image. So I'm going to use a keyword search. I'm just gonna type in the word mug and press return. And any image that we have in our library, which is tagged with the word mug will appear in the search results. So you can see here there's two pages of results. And I'm going to use the first item here, which is a mug. And just set the camera. And let me just move that into the top right hand corner. Now you may notice that the draw time is set to two seconds. In the previous tutorial, we showed you how to do that via the default. So all the images that I bring in now should come in in about two seconds draw time. Okay, so once you're happy with the position and the camera setting of your item, you can go into the image properties. Now, what you can do here is change the different brush effects. So at the moment, we've got no brush, which will mean that it's the standard brush stroke that we use to draw the image. If I change that, you can see that this is a brush effect. So you can see in the preview pane that the actual line thickness on different parts of the image have been altered. This is to give you the impression that a paintbrush has drawn those particular lines. And um, we also have some other effects, serrated, stitch and sew, or zip. Um, good things about using other effects such as zip is when you actually go to animate the item, a zip will actually draw the item out instead of a hand. So quite handy, especially if you're using um, textiles in your scribe projects to, to really bring that and enhance that. Okay, so I'm gonna move that back to no brush, back to its usual setting. And underneath there, you've got this setting which says 100% solid. So this is how solid the image is. So if I change that, for example, to 50%, it's half as solid as it was before. And if I had an item behind it, which was 100% solid, for example, you'd be able to see the item underneath. Okay, so let's change that back to 100. And add this image onto the canvas. Okay, so I'm also gonna use the keyword search to find another image now, which is a Superman image. And again, I'm just going to set the camera and adjust his size and back into the image properties. So um, on this example, um, you can see where it says full color. You can change that to different draw styles. So you can have outline, you can have grayscale, and you can have silhouette. You may have noticed this little black square on silhouette and outline. This is the color of the lines um, that you can use. Um, it's not available on full color or grayscale. But if I can show you quickly that you can change the color of the outline to blue. And if you're happy with that, you can press OK. Um, you can also see that on the silhouette option there as well. OK, so I'm just going to put him back to his usual setting, which is full color. And I'm going to press OK. All right then, so now we have um, two extra images. I'm going to show you now how you can use different filters on text to really enhance the text and bring it, bring it a bit more to life. So this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the mug item in the timeline. The reason being is I want the text to appear between the mug and the Superman image. Um, you can normally move it by dragging it um, in the usual way, but it might be quicker for you just to select um, the item before and then add the item in. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to write the word relax. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the word relax there. And in the bottom left hand corner, um, I have here a symbol, an F in a circle, which is a font symbol. 
So if I select that, for example, you can see the different fonts available. Now, VideoScribe comes with a basic font, but you can import your own fonts. Um, so, for example, here we have Crayon and our Sparkle branded font. Um, you can import any font that is on your computer, just ensure that you do have the right permissions to use them. Um, for example, if I selected this font, you can see that VideoScribe will start importing it. Um, you can see the progress at the bottom of how long it's going to take. So, the larger the character sets the font has, the longer that will take. But for now, we'll just go back and use the Sparkle brand font. So as you can see, it says Sparkle brand here instead of basic. And I'm also going to increase or change the color, should I say? OK, so I want to match the green color on the Help IT logo. So in order to do that, that particular color has its own code. Um, every color and shade has its own code. So if you do know them, you can input them manually to actually set that particular color. So as you can see here, it says Sparkle Brand. I'm happy with that. And if I just move it over here, you can see that the color matches the Help IT. So um, very handy if you have your own um, company logos or you're doing work for people who want specific colors. If you get the hex codes, you can match those colors on your scribes. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I've set the camera. So I'm going to add some enhancements onto this text. So I'm going to go into text properties and next to the T symbol you have the, the filter option. So here is the filter menu. Now with filters we have some um, quick and easy, easy access filters here such as blur where you can blur the items. So you can see in the preview screen it's uh, gone a bit blurry, blurrier than it was before. Um, but you also have a bit more um, customizable options such as drop shadow, inner shadow and bevel. So if I show you the drop shadow as an example, again keep your eye on the preview area when I increase the angle and then increase the, increase the offset. So you can see that the drop shadow does appear there. I'm also going to change the colour by using the black tile. So I'm going to give it a charcoal grey colour. Okay. So as you can see in the preview pane on the text properties option once you've okayed it, um, you can see the drop shadow there. I'm also going to use the write text backwards option so the text will actually write from right, from right to left instead of from left to right. So if we play that back you can see that in the preview option. Okay, so I'm happy with that and I'm going to bring that in there. Okay. The next thing I would like to show you, um, again, just um, when you're working with text and quick and easy tips really, um, if you've found an ideal enhancement that you want on your text, a camera position and also a style, um, what you can do is you can either manually try and um, replicate that, which can be quite time consuming, or you can make a copy of the existing one and then edit the text afterwards. So I'll show you how to do that now. So ensure that you have the item selected in the timeline, as we do here. and if you select this particular button, which is the copy button, you will then be allowed to paste it using the clipboard icon. Okay, so this has made a replica of the first bit of text. So you can see it's next to the first bit of text in the timeline. It's got exactly the same animate time and also the same enhancements. So I don't want relax um, written out twice on my project. So again, back into text properties. Um, this time there, I'm going to um, not write the text backwards but I'm going to edit the actual word to something else. So in the bottom left hand corner, I'm gonna select the edit or replace text icon and just overwrite that. And I'm gonna put the um, slogan that we came up with. Let us take IT off your hands. Okay, and you can see that it's still got the same font, Sparkle brand, so I'm going to select that. Okay, another thing you can do as well is use the alignment option. So you can see that it's aligned to the left. So if I do that, I want the top line in the middle. Okay, so now I'm happy with that. I'll just increase the animate time to two and a half seconds, um, just so it's a bit longer than the other one. As there are more words, it will make more sense to do it that way. So as you can see, um, it's exactly the same um, properties as the previous bit of text, but we've just changed the actual words there. Okay, I'm also going to move it to be the last item in the timeline, so let me just drag that after the Superman, and there we go. I'm happy with that. 
Okay, so the next thing um, you might want to do uh, with Videoscribe is erase um, text or images. So let's go through that now. So back up to the first scene. Now I want to get rid of this text somehow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I have the last item selected in the timeline and then I'm going to import a new image. So I'm going to search for this one but you can find it in the shapes library and it's called scribble out. So if I search for it you can see any results for those two words scribble and out. And the third one here is this blank item. So that's the one I want to bring in and as you can see it can cover over anything on a previous point in the timeline. Okay, so what I'm going to do first of all is set the camera and then I'm going to change the shape slightly so it covers the text without covering the lady. So there you have it. So now I've got some extra space to work with and also this will only happen later on in the timeline as it's the last item in the timeline presently. Okay, so what I can do now is decide whether I want the text to suddenly disappear or I want it to actually be scribbled out. So if I wanted it to suddenly disappear, all I need to do is change the animate time here down to zero and I'll just show you how that looks. It just pops off the screen. If I want it to actually give a scribble out effect or an erasing effect, I can increase that by a couple of seconds and play it back. And as you can see, it's gotten more, more of an erase effect. Okay, so what I can then do now is I can then um, layer another item over it. So I'm going to do that now with a business card. So I'm going to go back into the library to do that. Just wait for that to load up. And I'm going to go into the business section and find my business card. Okay, so again, set the camera before I do anything else. And then I can position that to where I want it. So I want it to kind of appear as the last item on my scene. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm quite happy with the draw time. Okay, so I'm just going to save my work from now and then go on to the final um, enhancement I want to show you, which is the move in animate method. Now, in order to show you that, I'm gonna do it twice with two different items. So the first one I'm gonna do it on is the help IT logo. So back to scene two, I've selected the help IT logo in the timeline and I'm going to select the image properties option. So here you can see the um, animate method is currently the draw time. Um, if I change that to move in, the animate time now reflects how long it's going to take the item to be moved in. Now you may have noticed that this extra option has activated. So this is where I can dictate where I want the item to move in from. So I'm gonna select the bottom right hand corner. Now, if I wanted to, I can move it in in a straight line but by clicking on this line, I can have an upwards or downwards curve. So I'm gonna go for an upwards curve, and just to the right of that, I've got the smooth in option. So that will be, it will move in in a smooth order. If I want it to go too far and overshoot, I can select go too far. If I want it to bounce in, um, it will actually bounce in. So that's the one we're going to use. So I'm gonna save that, and I'm just gonna reduce the animate time, and use the play from here option to show you how that works. Okay, so as you can see in a moment, the hand will come in and the item bounces. I'm just going to stop that there. Okay, now um, the next move in feature, again, using the business card I added earlier, I'm going to have this moving in by going into the properties. And this time I'm just gonna use a smooth and straight move in option and also just have it coming in from the side. Okay, so now um, you can see in the timeline that um, there's been a slight change. So previously um, you can see that it says draw here and now it says move. So that would indicate what kind of um, animate method you're using. So why don't we play it back from the scribble out? And as you can see, there's a scribble out technique being used and then the items moved in. Now it doesn't make much sense having a pen erasing or scribbling something out or a hand moving in another hand. So Johnny's gonna show you that in the next tutorial, tutorial number four. He's also gonna show you morphing techniques to really bring your scribes to life. That's it for now, I hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you again soon.